If you drive far enough into the Madison County countryside, you will find a house built in Virginia in 1790. Yes, a house built in Virginia in 1790. No, they didn't carry the house stone by stone through the Cumberland Gap. Short history lesson. Kentucky did not become a commonwealth until 1792. This is Dr. Gay Sweeley. She bought the Nathan Hawkins house at an auction in 2009. For the past three years, she has been preserving and restoring the house to its original state. Before going into detail about what she has done to restore the Nathan Hawkins house, let's look at the history of the house and its previous owners. Nathan and Nicholas Hawkins came from Spotsylvania County, Virginia after Nicholas received a Revolutionary War land grant in the Kentucky Territory. There are a few theories explaining why they settled here. We are totally surrounded by water, so I imagine that they moved here because of the water. The house was built by nine slaves from stone quarried at a grist mill below the house. The face of the house is symmetrical with two front doors. Why are there two front doors? The house is thought to be one of the first duplexes in Kentucky. We have been told that on the left-hand side was Nathan Hawkins, 74 years old, and on the right side, Nicholas Hawkins and his wife, Susanna, and their children were on this side. After Nathan Hawkins died in 1794, many of his possessions and land were given to his son, Nicholas. Nine slaves were included with the property. The slaves lived in the basement. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Whether they were warmer down there than they would have been in a shanty, uh, but they were where there is a fireplace downstairs, but it was all a dirt floor. After Nicholas Hawkins moved, the house was passed from family member to family member. Now, back to Dr. Sweetley. After purchasing the house in early 2009, a ton of work had to be done. This is what the house looked like the day they bought it, and one week after. When we started restoring the house, everything had to be restored. There wasn't anything that really was, could be kept unless it was redone and then kept. New windows put in, the bars taken off the basement. Um, everything had to really be redone. The stones and the 24 inch thick walls were the only things holding the house together. Dr. Sweeley hired an architect from Lexington to help her draft plans for a new addition to the back of the house. And he drew up plans to my specifications, and then we took it to the Historical Society. We were told that we would, they would be helping us with the costs of restoring the house. And they didn't like my plans at all. They wanted to do all kinds of things to the addition that we didn't want to have done. They wanted to change the windows and change doors. And the biggest thing is that they wanted the whole addition done in siding. And uh, we said, no, we kind of wanted it to look like the stone house. Dr. Sweeley and her husband have been working to restore the house for five years now and are still working to make it perfect. The house has four stories. The cellar, the first floor with a dining room and living room, the separated second floor with a library and guest room, and the third floor where Dr. Sweeley keeps her holiday decorations. Dr. Sweeley and her husband love their old stone house. They wish more historical houses would be restored and preserved. If I could go back to 1950 and even figure out how many homes in Madison County alone could have been restored, it's unbelievable. We'd do it again. It wasn't a bad process. I work in a department of all art majors. They're always very proud about what they've accomplished in their newest creation. And I turned around and tell them that you can have your creations, but I wake up in mine every morning. And the other best thing was adding stained glass windows. Dr. Sweeley wouldn't trade anything in the world for her old stone house. She absolutely loves living there. One more thing, are there any ghosts in the house? There's supposed to be ghosts all over this house. They haven't said anything to me yet, so I guess I'm doing okay. But I do want to make them polish the silverware sometime. The Nathan Hawkins House and Dr. Sweeley are standing figures inspiring restoration and preservation in the community. Who knows what their next adventure will be?